Hello mountain bikers and welcome back to your favorite gear show. We're two months into 2024 and the bike industry is already running at full tilt, pumping out new toys almost on the daily. We're not complaining though, you know we love new toys, especially when we get to tell you about them. On the topic of new toys, I've got a new bike, a Starling Murmur set up with all the goodies. I'll have a full review done of it at some point down the line and you'll also be seeing a lot more of it right here on the channel throughout the year, so stay tuned. As for gear, we've got a ton of rad new stuff to review today. This handy little electronic tire pump, a full face helmet from Giro, riding apparel from Velocio, and something very exciting for all you foot out, flat out fiends, Rempel is now making a flat pedal. All of this will be coming up shortly, but before we get into the reviews, time for our customary industry news roundup with a month in a minute. Let's dig in. SRAM made a huge splash in the braking pond this past week, introducing their all-new Maven to the world. The brake uses mineral oil and delivers so much power that our 230-pound tester opted to downsize his rotors. You can check out the unboxing right here on the channel and head to our website to read the full review. Also in braking news, Hayes dropped the purple edition of their excellent Dominion A4 brakes. Better jump on it if you want some, supplies are limited. Crank Brothers added a new family of shoes to their range with the introduction of the Stamp Trail and the Mallet Trail. We've got a review up on the site and we'll also cover them in detail in next month's Gear Show episode, so stay tuned for that. The Integration Masters at Scott have been at it again, launching the all-new Ransom with a hidden rear shock and enough internally routed cables to make your mechanic hate you forever. Privateer dropped the second generation of their frame platform with updated geometry and kinematics and changes made to improve durability and serviceability. Nolly launched the updated Chilcotin, now featuring a straight top tube and a little bit more travel to tackle more aggressive terrain. Crestline was in the news when they signed up to go World Cup downhill racing with Aaron Gwynn this year, and they also dropped the limited edition RS180 Team Edition EMTB, 75 pieces only, get yours while you can. Also in e-bike news, Cannondale's new Motera claims to be the lightest full-power EMTB ever made. With 85 Nm of torque, a 601 watt-hour battery, and a claimed weight of as low as 19.5 kilos, this does sound quite remarkable indeed. Hope has been keeping busy as always. They just launched a carbon crank, a new stem, an updated PF41BB, and a new bronze colorway. Bright Racing has launched the third generation of their upside down fork, with many improvements made to create a lighter fork with better mechanical performance. Formula announced their 10 year support promise, making sure that every product they make will have parts and support available for at least 10 years. Limar continues to expand their mountain bike helmet range with the introduction of the lightweight Livigno full face helmet. Shimano is also out there shaving grams with the launch of three new lightweight riding glasses. KMC can help you add that weight right back on with their new budget friendly but quite portly 10 and 11 speed cassettes. Daysaver has made some improvements to their innovative compact multi-tool with better resistance to oxidization and some new tool bits. And to conclude this news section, Chris King has introduced an IS41 version of their grip lock headset for DH bikes with straight steer tubes. Whoa, so much rad stuff, and it's about to get even more exciting. That's right, Rental is now making a flat pedal. After 14 years of supplying parts for the cockpit, they felt the time was now right to turn their attention to the other crucial mountain bike contact point, your feet. What were their goals in doing so? What will allow their pedal to stand out in a sea of other options? And most importantly, what do we think of the performance after one and a half months on the trail? Time to find out. Renthal has been making cockpit parts for 14 years now, and they definitely did not want to make a pedal just for the sake of making one. They spent quite a bit of time working on the new pedal, called the Revo F, and the result is a well-rounded product that would have pride of place on any flat pedal build. Starting from the internals, the Revo F was made to be durable and easy to service. Renthal settled on a full-length chromoly axle, spinning on a large Igos bushing and three smaller outboard bearings. To make the pedal easy to work on for most any home mechanic, they developed an axle system that also serves to pull the bushing out of the pedal for servicing by using the pedal's own axle and some very common tools. 6 and 8 mm Allen keys, a standard 8 mm socket and a mallet. That's it. Rental has in fact just been granted a patent pending for the design of this axle system, which tells you that it is indeed something quite novel. The outline of the Revo F looks similar to many other flat pedals, but the devil is always in the details. The machining is intricate, and the profile of the contours is deliberate. The Revo F presents a chamfered leading edge, designed to slide off obstacles as opposed to hang up on them. That also means that there's quite a lot of material left in this area, which adds to the weight of the pedal. At 490 grams for the pair, it is among the heavier options out there at the moment. The axle is quite long, which allows the pedal to sit a bit further out from the crank arm, even though the platform itself is quite compact. And the Revo F offers seven millimeters of concavity, which is a lot. 
The pins come in two different pin lengths and there are washers that can be used to create a number of different combinations with pin height varying from 2.5 to 5.5 millimeters at any of the pin positions. The pins load from the rear of the pedal, which should help ensure that they can be easily removed even if you snap them off completely. On the trail, the significant amount of concavity really helps the foot sink in and find grip, regardless of where you place it. The long axle places the pedal far enough away from the crank arm to allow even riders with big feet to not feel cramped. We think this pedal strikes a very good balance between its overall size and the ability to sneak past trailside obstacles. It's not the roomiest pedal underfoot, but it doesn't feel cramped either. The grip delivered by the threaded pins is excellent, and we think Renthal pretty much nailed the pin placement as well. The pedal feels familiar underfoot, and we've not been able to fault the performance in any circumstances, including wet weather and thick mud. You could argue that there are already more than enough flat pedal options in the market, but Renthal has just proven that you can still sweat the details and add value to the equation. If grip, durability and serviceability are high on your list of requirements, and you don't mind carrying around a few extra grams, we believe you'll be very well served with the Revo F. Velocio is well known in the road and gravel world for producing high-end riding apparel. But despite launching their mountain bike line back in 2018, we'd bet that many mountain bike riders aren't that familiar with the brand. With focus on creating highly durable gear from premium fabrics with calm, subtle colorways, their latest product line is sure to jump right towards the top of your must-check-out list if you're in the market for some fresh, sleek riding gear. First up, let's check out the Micromodal Trail Jersey. This is Velocio's softest jersey, made from Italian-milled micromodal tech mesh with a super fine knit. The fit is relaxed with an extended hem and articulated shoulders for unrestricted mobility. Hands down the lightest and softest jersey we have ever worn, the material offers great wicking and quick drying properties, making it ideal for hot rides where breathability is key. It also allows the jersey to pair well with warmer outer layers by helping regulate your core temperature. Our only complaint is that the fabric is thin and has begun to stretch around the neck and arms after six months of wear, but that's part of the game when wearing light and thin gear, so riders who are tough on their gear, do beware. The trail access short is made from a lightweight, stretchy cordura fabric that is exceptionally durable and abrasion resistant without being stiff or heavy. The material is finished with a DWR treatment to repel rain and mud, and minimal seams are used throughout to improve comfort. The access short has a 14-inch inseam in size medium that changes by half an inch as you go up or down in sizes. The front panel is longer to eliminate the chance of showing any skin between the short and knee pads, and the overall fit is airy without feeling baggy or cumbersome. Two laser cut and bonded zip packers are found on the side of the short, while two extra deep drop-in pockets are placed on the front of the thighs. The zippered pockets hold items close to your body and are big enough to fit most phones, while the front pockets are perfect for storing multiple items like keys, gloves, a multi-tool or snacks. There are no built-in waist adjusters, just good old belt loops. You can use any belt or buy this one from Velocio for 38 US dollars. We've used this short with great results for everything from bike park laps to long days out in the saddle. The Delta Trail long sleeve jersey prioritizes heat and sweat management, making it ideal for year-round riding in temperate climates. The jersey is made from Polartec Delta fabric that is woven into a grid pattern to elevate the fabric off your skin, creating better air circulation and helping wick sweat away from your body. The overall fit is close to your body without feeling restrictive, with an extended hem and articulated shoulders that create an optimal on-the-bike fit. Combining the extra coverage of a long sleeve with the breathability of Polartec has made the Delta jersey one of the most versatile pieces in our gear bag. It's not too hot for warm summer days, yet it offers enough insulation to keep you comfortable in cooler temps. An awesome jersey that we ride in a lot. The Trail Axis Pant blends lightweight and durable materials to maximize comfort and versatility. From the bike park to casual trail rides, the Axis Pant is meant for daily use. It's made with two stretchy Cordura fabrics plus a ripstop fabric in high wear areas, while an external DWR coating helps repel water and dirt. Minimal seams are found throughout to avoid failure points. The fit is more relaxed than some trail pants we've worn, with plenty of space and movement in the upper legs. The lower leg and ankle are tapered to keep the pant from parachuting out, but there is still enough space to accommodate knee pads. The pant does have a shorter rise, which makes it tough to wear bibs or a chamois while also keeping the pant sitting high on our hips. The pant features the same laser cut and bonded zip pockets found on the access short that keep items tight to your body, but it doesn't get the drop in front pockets. It also uses a traditional belt and snap button to remain in place. Offering a lot of comfort and mobility combined with great durability and protection in high wear areas, the Axis Pant has been our go-to for summer park laps, damp trail rides and winter enduro or e-bike rides. It isn't the most breathable trail pant we've worn, but that does come with the territory for such a durably designed piece of gear. A final note, all the gear we tested is available in women's sizes and cuts, and Velocio operates a repair program for any gear you should happen to damage. All you pay is the return shipping. That's pretty cool in our books. The lightweight, full-face helmet market has grown considerably over the past five years or so, driven by the increasing popularity of the Enduro discipline and, of course, the rise of the e-bike. 
Jiro has been a bit late to the true lightweight full face party, but they've put that extra development time to good use. The all new coalition spherical ticks all of the boxes and then some. The new coalition is based around a combination of two foam impact layers of different type and density, each intended to deal with specific ranges of impact velocity, respectively. To help mitigate the effects of off-axis impacts to the head, Jiro opted for the new spherical MIP solution for the coalition. This concept places the well-known slip plane between the two layers of EPP and EPS foam, creating a ball and socket layout that allows for the inner shell to rotate within the outer shell, thus absorbing a portion of any rotational impact forces that could otherwise be transmitted directly to the rider's head. The chin bar is made with PBACs, a strong yet somewhat flexible material said to help absorb impact energy in this area. To further reduce the transmission of unwanted impact forces from the chin bar to the helmet itself, Jiro has implemented a set of internal bushings that hold the chin bar in place, and the chin bar itself is also lined with EPP foam, which provides further impact force absorption capabilities. Other safety features include breakaway bolts on the visor and cheek pads that can be pulled out from underneath the helmet to facilitate its removal after a crash. The Coalition is certified to all the major safety standards, including the Dutch e-bike standard and the ASTM downhill helmet standard. The Coalition is available in three shell sizes. Each size is delivered with two sets of cheek and neck pads of different thickness to allow the user to fine-tune the fit. There is a generous internal comfort liner, which lines up with the numerous vents found all around the shell. A fidlock buckle makes it easy and convenient to secure or open the chin strap. On the trail, we're always stoked when a full-face helmet fits without resorting to an adjustable harness, as this usually provides for more of a full-face feel, whereas the harness usually reminds us more of our half-shell helmets. The new Coalition delivers here, with a shell shape that should conform to many heads out there, and two full sets of internal pads to play with to adjust the fit. The internal comfort liner is generous enough to feel quite plush, but the large number of well-placed vents provide ample airflow, which gives the helmet a very aired-out feel. The chin bar sits quite far from the mouth and features a large central opening which remains unobstructive even when breathing hard. Keeping the helmet on when climbing is entirely possible without feeling like you're going to overheat at any moment. On the way back down, the Coalition is perfectly stable in action, aided by the good fit and the light weight. The visor can be adjusted to sit in your preferred spot and the frontal opening provides a wide view of the world in front of you. The vents placed directly above the brow area help the comfort liner dry out quickly here, minimizing the risk of sweat dripping into your eyes. The helmet is also very quiet, with no rattles or squeaks from the MIPS layer detected. In summary, the Coalition is stable, cool and quiet. It will make itself forgotten both on the climbs and the descents, while providing the kind of peace of mind that comes from knowing that it sports about as many of the latest safety features as possible. Miniature air pumps are nothing new, but many of them lack the power to deal with larger volume mountain bike tires. Psych Plus has just launched their all-new AS2 Pro Max, a pump that is strong enough to handle our fat rubber while still slipping easily into a pocket or a pack. Gimmick or great? Let's find out. The AS2 Pro Max is a beefed-up version of the pumps that Psych Plus was already selling. It gets a faster brushless electric motor and a bigger battery, which translates to better airflow and stamina. The pump can provide pressure of up to 120 psi, and while that is of course not relevant for a mountain bike tire, it is still indicative of good power. The unit reaches full charge in one hour on a USB-C charger, not included, and holds enough juice to fully inflate a 29-inch mountain bike tire many times over. The nozzle can be switched to accommodate either Presta or Schrader valves, and there's an extension hose and a needle for inflating balls and such included in the kit as well. You also get a water-resistant pouch and a silicon insulation case. Using the AS2 Pro Max is simple. A small LED screen tells you the level of charge of the battery, and the target pressure can be set with the help of two buttons. Slip the nozzle over the valve and press the start button to begin inflation. The pump will automatically shut off when the target pressure is reached. The pump is a bit noisy, but nothing overwhelming at all. We found the pressure gauge reasonably accurate, and we were indeed able to inflate our tires many times over with a single charge. We also found that the unit will hold its charge for at least several weeks when not in use. You still want to check and recharge fairly regularly if you want to be able to really count on your pump when you need it, but as stated, it will survive a few weeks in your riding pack without losing a bar of power. What about airflow, you wonder? Well, it's not enough to get the bead seated from zero with a troublesome tubeless tire. Yeah, we tried. But the speed of inflation is still quite impressive for such a small unit. It is an effective replacement for a mini pump or CO2 cartridges in your riding pack, where it will cover most trailside tire emergencies. As long as the tire bead stayed on, you'll be fine. And if it didn't, you're probably looking at using a spare tube anyway, which will obviously also be easy to inflate with this pump. Being able to simply recharge it off a USB-C charger is an added bonus. It sure beats buying new CO2 cartridges ever so often. The weight penalty compared to a cartridge with its inflator is about 100 grams. So if that doesn't bother you, you can definitely give it a go. Okay then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. 
Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.